All right. Good morning and welcome to Women of the Stars. Today I have Nikki Inman with me. Hi, Nikki. Hello. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> I was thinking how we met and I had to make sure, but I, I thought about it. And that day I was in Publix and, you know, I, not Publix, it was Costco. Costco. Mm -hmm. I, and I do not like going to Costco. I do not. <laughs> I really don't because it's way too many people. It's like a traffic jam. It's like chaos. And I put a bubble around me that day and I said, you know what? Only, and you know, I keep all my energy to myself and I only want to meet people that I'm supposed to meet. And I met two ladies. One, I just thought her scarf was just so nice. And then it was you. Yay. You were there with your sweetheart, your boo. And uh, I know what it was, your jacket. You had on that blinged out jacket that you did the artwork on, I think. Like you oh, had on I know what you're talking about. My jeans jacket, and it has a big thingy on the back. Yeah, I know you're yeah, and it was so beautiful. And I was like, okay, I'm talking to this lady now. And then we accept <laughs> numbers, and we don't live that far. And so it was right. just, it was really cool to talk to you. But um, I know you've been really busy with your business, and I want you to tell us about your business. Um, I know that. You were basically, I guess they call it a cancer survivor. Do you, you like that term or? No, I'm, I've never had cancer. No? Mm -mm. But, okay, so how did you end up taking such a drastic step with diet and teaching people about diet and, and food? Ooh, so I'm sure it has a lot to do with my background and my, my upbringing. Um, my background is... Um, Caribbean and so the way I was raised was everything was very natural like we didn't eat a lot of processed foods um, we didn't do a lot of medicine everything was from a very natural standpoint so growing up that way and learning you know like if you're sick it's like my grandma was boiling some type of herb bush tea something that tasted insipidly disgusting but it was good for you and you should drink it and so, <laughs> and so that was sort of my, that was my foundation that was my foundation so you know as time went along i actually when i was born i had a whole um i i actually i, I need to ask my mom because this is the one thing that i haven't asked her was was I because I don't think she breastfed me for very long I think she bottle fed me and naturally she was using cow's milk so <clears throat> I stayed with a cold and mucousy and just always sick with respiratory issues and so my grandmother my grandmother was gangster she would like suck like all the mucus out my nose I and spit it. it out and you know and my mom was just like, ooh, <laughs> like she's not doing that. But my mom was a young mom. She was 20 when she had me. So, um, so yeah, growing up, I still had these like respiratory issues and I was always sick. I was diagnosed with an asthmatic chest. And so my parents took me to a doctor in, in England because I'm from England, I'm sure the viewers have picked up my accent by now. But um um, they took me to a doctor um, in England. Now, doctors in Europe are a little bit different than doctors in the US. I currently live in the US. I've been here for about 33 years. But the doctor that they were recommended, and this was a medical doctor that they were rec recommended to take me to, but he was more on the natural side of things. And so he told my parents, get her off dairy, get her off meat, and you will see a change in what she's got going on so that was sort of the beginning of my journey um with the whole diet and you know illness and what have you so um back way back in the day it's different now there are more options and people are more accustomed or aware of plant-based lifestyles and but back then it was challenging because there just wasn't the education and the knowledge um, at the time. I and remember, so I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, I do remember in the 90s, I lived with a family and the daughter, she had a baby and they 
they switched to goat milk because what happened, the baby had like so many scabs and like you eczema. said, mucusy, and it makes it look like the child has eczema, but yeah. is it eczema or is it just an allergic reaction to dairy? Well, eczema a lot of the time is, um, it's the body's uh, indication that something that you're eating or putting on your body is out of balance with what the body wants. So a lot of time people have eczema and they're just using topical ointments to fix it, oh, wow. but you're not getting to the root of the issue, realizing that your body's communicating, hey, you're putting something in me and I'm letting you know that this is not good and I'm trying to let you know this way, right? So it can, it can show up in different ways. Some people have anaphylactic shock, can't breathe. Hey, do you hear me? <laughs> like, yeah. can we start doing this, please? So yeah, the, the eczema a lot of the time has to do with diet. So this is also for me personally, this is why I see people, they want to take, they want to eat um, spaghetti sauce, but they want to take an acid. And I'm like, you really don't need an acid. What you need to do is stop trying to eat pizza. Stop. <laughs> and, you know, or they'll have a headache and yeah. they take Tylenol, but it's like, these are warning signs. Like, I don't think you should always suffer through, but there's a remedy beyond taking Tylenol Absolutely. to the headache. Even up to, I remember when I was in the military, they want to give you cortisone shots. So now you no longer feel the warning signs. And so wow. I, I feel like people are always dulling down the signal. Yep. And then yep. keep doing what you're doing to make it work. Right. And the body doesn't stop speaking. The body is always speaking to us. Um, it's designed to do that because it's designed to heal. That's just the way it was designed. And so, like you said, in society, we have been, we've been taught to silence the symptoms. And the symptoms are our friends. They're there to help. They're there to let us know that something's amiss, something's out of alignment. And if we ignore those messages, the messages just get louder because it needs it fixed, because the body is always trying to get back to homeostasis, always trying to keep us in balance, always trying to heal us, always trying to keep us well, because that's its job. Like literally everybody on this planet is here to do something. And if you think of your body like a spacesuit, this is the suit you need to be here, right? And so wow. you have to take care of that suit so that you can be here to do what you're supposed to do. So it's kind of like, these are like inbuilt alarms in the suit that let you know, oh, there's a leak, there's a leak, we've got to fix the leak, right? Don't just take duct tape and stick over the Like, no, where's the leak coming from? Why is it coming? Okay, let's make sure that we fix that so that the suit can continue to do what it's supposed to do. That's right. You can't put hot glue on it, y'all. You got to focus <laughs> and fix it. So you said that was like the beginning during your childhood. You went to this doctor who told you all to get, they told them to get you off of the milk. And then you said you moved forward in time. And yeah, it's a, yeah, it was, it was challenging because, you know, there wasn't really massive knowledge around that, or that wasn't necessarily a way of lifestyle. Like my parents, like they, we never ate out and ate McDonald's. When we ate McDonald's, it was like a massive treat. It was like, oh my God, I'm going to get McDonald's. But it wasn't, it wasn't a way of life. It was not normal. So my mom and dad always cooked from home. We were taught how to cook. Um, and a lot of the food, we didn't eat a lot of packaged or processed foods. That was just the way I was raised. However, with this diet change, um, it didn't last for very long. Let's just say that it did not last for very long because of the way we were accustomed to eating. And so I continued to have these issues. So it wasn't until I got a little bit older and I could take over my own um, eating, you know, habits as it were, and really sort of do some research and deep dive and really learn about the human body and these different foods and what they do once they go in the body that I was really able to grasp like, okay, let's, let's do this. And, um, safe to say, I do not eat dairy. Um, I eat very little meat and I no longer have those issues. <laughs> I no longer, like I barely ever get sick. That was what I was curious about. Cause I, I have heard how we are designed to eat meat but it's the way that we eat meat and how much we eat meat and then what they do to the meat that kind of causes a big problem. Um, so there's, you know, there's depending on what source you go to, 
um, there are varying opinions on that, right? So um, it's so funny because I knew that this was going to come up. I was in meditation this morning and I was, I was shown very clearly that this question. Yeah, was, yeah. So um, really and truly, the whole purpose for eating meat is for protein. Okay. So if you can understand that, and if you can understand the protein doesn't have to, does not have to come from meat sources, that gives you a really good foundation of understanding what the purpose of meat is. We've kind of been conditioned to believe that meat must be a part of our diet. It does not have to be a part of our diet. However, um, I am very clear on bio-individuality, okay? And everybody's body is different and people do different things. So, for example, we can say mangoes are healthy, right? And then because of something that's going on in someone's body, and it's not always external, sometimes it's internal, that person can eat mango and they have a horrible allergic reaction, right? And mm -hmm. then another person can eat mango and they have a mild reaction. Another person can eat mango and it's just great. They're fine, right? So because of, um, like I said, bio-individuality and what happens when we're in our mother's wombs and how she eats, and how she's thinking and how she's living that sets what it's that's a whole study on epigenetics so that sets the tone for what happens in us dna wise right so we can be born with propensities to having this issue being allergic to this doing this having these issues however if we live a certain way and our lifestyle is in homeostasis, we have the ability to switch things off and on. So you may have a propensity for something, but it doesn't mean that it's going to manifest if you're living a certain way. So you can literally have, because a lot of the times in society we're told, oh, it runs in my family. We have this thing because it runs in our family. But a lot of the, life a lot of the time, it's not the thing that runs in the family, it's lifestyle. And again, it's those the epigenetic parts of things being switched on and off. So you have the ability to switch things off. And I, I know I can get kind of deep, so I don't want to lose anybody. So I'm trying to keep no, it no, as, no. No, no, no. as um, possible. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to yeah. keep it as succinct as possible. So ultimately, you know, then you start talking about evolutionary things and, you know, as time goes along. But let me get back to, because like I said, this is a whole rabbit hole that we can go down. But let me get back to, do we need to eat meat? No. Do we need to eat dairy? No. That's, that's, there is no need. Can we? Of course we can. Of course we can. And we do. Um, but, not but, and we there just needs to be more education there needs to first of all in, in in western society we eat entirely too much protein and too much protein puts a lot of work on our kidneys puts a lot of work on our kidney and it creates massive problems and you have people with kidney disease and then you have people who are on dialysis and just so many other issues that come out of it. we eat entirely too much meat uh, do i completely not eat meat at all no i do eat occasionally um, my meat of choice a lot of time is fish. So that, that's really cool because it's talking about propensity. I think it's like propensity, it's mindset. Uh, yeah. Well, since your grandmother is who she is, this firm foundation was praying over the food, also something you feel that transmuted the food and made it more digestible or nutritious because I've been taking a metaphysics class and a part of it is the speak the life over the food speaking the life over the water and things like that and and absolutely. How we... absolutely when I make meals I make medicinal meals for my clients who have cancer and when I am making the food and when I'm making food for any of my clients um absolutely I'm infusing every healing component into that because everything is frequency everything is energy so for sure yeah that's you know and, and and that brings up the subject of being careful about where you eat where you go to eat you know there are just some mm. really low vibrations 
people have been taught there was this whole thing going on about low vibrational foods are there low vibrational foods yeah there are low vibrational foods but there are also low vibrational people who are infusing their energy into your food because they don't like their job or it's they're just there for a paycheck or you know and so then all of that energy is just going into your food and then you wonder why after you've eaten something you feel sleepy or you feel mad or you just feel off and you don't really know why that's yeah. another one of those like water for chocolate i know if anybody yes! really oh watches God, me God, like God, water God, for God, chocolate God. yeah she puts I all know. her love in the food until one day when she's really unhappy and then everybody gets sick <laughs> Everybody was sitting at the table just crying because she was crying over the food. Now, of course, that was a very grandiose way of demonstrating that. But nevertheless, it's very factual. It's very, very, very factual. Um, you know, I have many clients who are like, you know, Nick, I know that my healing from cancer was because of the food that you made for me and the energy that you infuse in our food. Because, yeah, um, no, that is... That is paramount. And so speaking about going back to the question you asked about me, um, if we were, if we were, one of the reasons that one of my favorite movies is Avatar. And one of the things I love about Avatar is when they took life and the reverence and the respect they had for the life that was taken. Um, even within um, Indian cultures, like maybe more ancient Indian cultures, that when they killed animals, it wasn't just this mass slaughter it was very intentional and they were very grateful for you know what this animal was going to bring to the family which was sustenance and so what we have today though is this industrial manufacturing you know food industry that treats the animals horribly and just you know between the antibiotics and the hormones and, you know, let's not even start talking about the fact that now they want to make meat in labs. It's it's not. Or that they know. have been making meat in labs. Right. They're just now saying it. Very true. Right. So <laughs> now they're just saying it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that all of that matters. All of that absolutely matters because the energy and the environment that those animals are living in, you know, and the fear the fear like we know as humans that when we're scared we release certain hormones and release certain chemicals in our bodies animals are just the same and then we turn around and we eat that and wonder why we feel the way that we feel or why you know we're just more i don't know disconnected and you know we're not we're not connecting that back to the food that we're taking in because it's really important for us to understand that holistically like we're 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 holistic beings. So yeah. everything touches. We're emotional, we're spiritual, we're mental, we're physical. And you can't separate them. Like if something's going on with you spiritually, it's going to affect you mentally. If something's going on with you physically, it's going to affect you emotion emotionally. So if you're taking in foods that, you know, that the animal was unhappy and just, you know, scared and terrified before it died, you better believe that you are going to be ingesting those hormones. I so, believe that's what halal meat is about. Like, right, the so halal and kosher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the halal and kosher meat meats. Or, you know, you have people who raise their own animals. I was talking to my husband the other day, I said to him, I believe that if we had to kill our own animals to eat, we would kill less animals to eat. We would find different ways of eating because going through that whole process you know, there, there is an emotion that there's, there's absolute every again, everything is frequency and energy, you're going to feel the emotions of that animal who knows that, okay, we've reached the end here. Most of the people that I know that that raise chickens or they, they have their own chicken as a pet, they do not eat chicken. So exactly. They because do not eat chicken. That disconnection, right? So because yeah. we can go into the store and it's in this pretty package. And we won't talk about the pretty packages and how we look at it and think, oh, that piece of beef looks so red and vibrant and if you knew what they did why it's red and vibrant you wouldn't want to eat it but that's another right story. Well, the, well i was going to talk about that that's why i wrote on that paper temple grandin which that movie is about a woman who has autism mm -hmm. but you know one of the parts of her story was that because she was having sensory issues they let her go live with 
uh, family members that had a farm because they noticed, you know, this is something that she was really into. It really calmed her. It really, um, I don't know. Have you heard of Temple Grandin? I have not. Now that's a movie for me to put on my list. Oh, you will love this movie. So when she heard the phone ring, when she was a small child, she would hear the phone ring and she would destroy it. They just thought she had like these bad behavior issues, but they didn't realize like the trauma of the phone ringing was just really bothering her. And then she used to, um, she needed like this sensory device. And later on in life, when she goes and starts to, um, she gets a degree in husbandry, which is farming. And she observes what the cows observe. And she's like the one person that starts to think of it from the cow's perspective. And she starts looking at the flashing lights and she's like, oh, this is alarming. Like that would drive me crazy. The fact that they were just yelled at and herded through this yeah. pen, they didn't know where they were going and they would, they would show distress. They go, ah, you know, they're like crying. But um, I've even seen like Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead and other shows where they show how they lift the cow up by its legs and it's, it's alive and it's just being Flame dragged around. around. And I don't mind seeing that because it's like, y- you should watch some of these shows to see what how they're treated they're really treated pretty bad and so this distress that she's talking about like that's the last thing before that's your last breath is screaming for your life and then you're kind of wondering why you're agitated and then you know then then there's people working in the packaging factories and all their trauma what they're going through Mm -hmm. Uh, my brother worked in a packaging factory and he said it was the like it was the most difficult thing to do like not that you were seeing the whole animal but just even just cutting meat all day was like this horrifying feeling for him to be exposed to um all of this and um a part of that metaphysics that I was learning about is like no matter what has happened no matter who's hurt or you know, a lot of people think about what goes into making their phone or what what goes into, you know, any kind of slavery involved with manufacturing of their phones or products. And it's like saying these prayers so that no matter what you're, you're covered, that you can get this nutrients out of your body. And I think um, it's just like when you walk into a party and you can feel the people's energy and then they can feel your energy and that's why they got that term you're the life of the party because when you're in here you vibe so so strong and so positive that you make the party positive and strong so like these these are definitely things that uh that affect us and it's it's the vibration like you say everything is frequency had you because this was something like you said you became in charge of your individual diet there's a thing about cooking for one. So it's like, how do you cook and eat for one? Because in the beginning, before before you got coupled and had your beautiful family, how 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 did that work for you? <laughs> well, remember I was taught um, how to cook my parents. So we were a family of five. So to be fair, cooking for one was challenging because I knew how to cook for many. So scaling down and cooking one Oof. yeah it just did up just make too much food a lot of the time but, you know you don't have to do things like free things and eat things multiple times <laughs> so they're not wasting food <laughs> yeah so forgive us you all if, if it sounds weird or funny because it's rubber banding for me but i'm not sure if it's rubber banding for for you all as you're listening but is you know we got the Mer- Mercury retrograde warning that Venus retrograde really was affecting me with that Lion's Gate. So I was like, ah, hit him with a car, you know, like <laughs> I was like really feeling a little bit intense. I could say I'm still feeling a bit intense. I'm still feeling a little bit fired up. But um, but yeah. So you said it's just something that you you kind of got used to, right? Yeah. And. Uh, Wow. I, I lived with a girl and she it was four of us in an apartment and this one girl, she would get stamps and she would cook like one potato. Mm. She would turn on the whole oven for one potato 
And um, she would make like one. I mean, I couldn't. I would look at her and be like, I don't even know how to do that. Number one. But number two, you messing with my electric bill while you playing around with a whole potato in the oven. Because do you know how long it takes to get one potato to. <laughs> I was like, mm -mm, no, ma'am, you not only are you a little bit selfish. <laughs> She was like, I can't share because when I signed the papers for the stamps, they I was like, I know this girl is playing. <laughs> Man. She and was a hot mess. Oh my word. Are you aware of you heard of human design? Human design, yes. Okay, so I, in human design, I'm a projector. And oh. so part of being a projector means that I just know like the shortcuts to things like we're not doing this the long way. We're not doing this the hard way. We are going to find the most succinct and most logical way to get from A to B. And so for me, I could never like just cook one potato in the oven because I'm, you, we're going to use the energy one time, right? And we're going to max out that energy. Even if it means you're food prepping, we are using that oven one time. And when we're planning out what we're cooking in the oven, we're planning out multiple meals that need to be cooked in the oven, right? So, you know, even for me, like cooking, like I, when I cook beans, I use dried beans and I cook them from scratch. I am not going to just share out a portion of the dried beans packet. We're cooking the whole thing. We're using the energy one time so that we can save time later because you can literally freeze them. You can jar them so that when you're ready for them the next time, You've cut time in half. Like, yeah, not doing that. One potato in the oven. No. Girl. <laughs> I think my soul, I was just, when I went to the military, they loved me because that's the way that I cook as if I'm in doing KP duty, like I'm in the Navy, a cook in the Navy or something because I'm like, the, you know, the big pan. I'm always with the big pan. But the only thing is now when it's just me and my son, that big pan can get you in trouble because you're like, wait a minute, I want some more. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> there's so much, right? Yeah, because you have so much. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes. So then um, so then you had your single life and you still just, you you did it. You froze. I'm really tempted to because I'm thinking like, I need I needed some solutions. Maybe it's you that I need. So it's I need to, to connect with you. So, wow. Um, so what are some other things that you feel cause, that are important? I know that um, what you're doing is trying to help people save their lives. Mm -hmm. And so are people coming to you when they're sick? How are they finding you? Like, are they coming to you when they're well or are family members saying, hey, you need to talk to Nikki? How how are, how are you finding people that so, really need your service? To be fair, I'm not finding anybody. Again, that has a lot to do with my human design. So part, I'm a 4-1 mental projector. And um, the 4 in that system is community. And that's my first number. So my community is who recommends me and who sends people to me. And so a lot of my clients are from referrals. Um, and unfortunately, um, because people know what it is that I do, not unfortunately, I mean, I, naturally I would, it's so much easier to prevent, prevention is so much easier than the cure, right? So ideally it would be awesome if more people were interested in preventing disease, preventing illness, unfortunately, because of just sometimes how we are as humans, um, we wait to the last minute. Why? Well, there's an African proverb that says that wellness is not valued until sickness comes. So because we live in duality, we're constantly needing that comparison. So when my health is in the trash and I'm feeling crappy, now I value my health and I want my health. But when I had my health, I wasn't necessarily paying attention to the things that I need to do in order to stay here. So a lot of people that come to me have cancer, have kidney disease, um, have diabetes, um, they have all of the ETs and things of that nature. Um, and my job is to help them. I guide them. I don't necessarily tell them what to do, but I guide them and we get to the root of why are you here? What caused this? Because um, there is the, there is the, 
potentiality to only be concerned with making the thing go away versus actually understanding why it came to be in the first place. Whether people want to admit it or not, your body made the disease as a way of crying out for help. And your body is also very aware on how to heal the disease. Your job is to create the environment that allows the body to do what it's naturally designed to do, which is heal. And so that's my job. I guide people on getting to the root of why you're here. Okay, so you have cancer. Why do you have cancer? Let's let's dig. Like let's look into your lifestyle. Let's let's look let's look at you holistically. Those four areas: mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical. Let's look at all four of those aspects and see which one of those areas are out of balance that is creating this situation. Or you know, where are you out of balance with the planet as a whole? Like, are you? Are you, are you being in sync with your circadian rhythm? Because if you're not, you're going to have disease. And so breaking that down, um, how are you eating? How are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Are you not sleeping? You know, what is your sleep hygiene like? Are you getting good quality sleep? Because if you're not during that time, that's when your body is healing. That's when it's doing all the work to heal, break things down, get rid of things. And if you're not sleeping properly, these things, these methods don't get to take place. And then your body is now overburdened with toxins that didn't, that weren't released. You know, what are you putting on your body? There's a lot of things like, oh, you froze. Yeah. So um, even conventional deodorant, people are wearing conventional deodorant and wondering later, like, oh, I've got Parkinson's disease. Yeah, because you've been filling your body with um, aluminum, aluminum. Right. So your pots, your pans, um, your water. Oh, my bottles. God. We were just talking about Teflon pans. Yeah. They, just yeah. like, they were going to last forever and they were all yeah. in your eggs. Yeah. So it's 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 the knowledge. It's those pieces like that. Um, as a society, though, we're very trusting. We're like, you know, my God, the government would never allow these things to be there that they know would harm us. Yeah, no. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> Not true. No because you, we're talking about business. We're talking about commerce. So for them, if it makes money, it makes sense. You know, if it makes sense. Right. And so that's why they have this, lobbyists to, right. to the government and say, please don't tell anybody that this is going right. to kill people. Exactly. We make some money, please. Exactly. And, um, and people say so, the FDA would never approve. And I'm never. Like, people like, are you serious? Do you see yeah. the recall list for the FDA, you guys? That's an amazing list, especially the drug list. <sighs> Things that were just you know, wonderful, like Fin Fin and all these things back in the day, or even last year, if you go yeah. look back, even last year, things that are recalled and just taken off the shelf. Um, most diseases, dis-ease, have the same warning signs, they right? Do. And so this was why people can go so far without knowing exactly what's wrong with them. Mm -hmm. What would be some things you say that that it's like, hey, if you have this going on, you need to figure out life right now. Like, what are some things that you would say um, that either clients come to you or things you just know, like when you're when your diet is poor? Um, what, body pain. Body, body pain. pain. Yeah. And a lot of the time people just kind of shrug off body pains and body pains is definitely a sign of inflammation and inflammation is the beginning stages of a lot of diseases. Um, like you could just about every disease can manifest out of inflammation. I mean, every disease can manifest out of inflammation. So um, you want to make sure that you are eating anti-inflammatory foods, which is going to be your whole foods diet. That's going to be, all of your very colorful vegetables, very colorful fruits in whole form, not in a tin, not in a package of some form, but literally, you know, from from the store, like from the way it's grown naturally. Now, ideally, you can grow your own food. That's a fantastic space to be in, right? Because you know exactly what you're growing. But 
And if you are going to grow your own food, heirloom seeds, heirloom means that it's the seed from the fruit from generation, generation, not that it's GMO versus non-GMO, but I'll be quiet and let you no, go on with your symptoms. You're good. Yes. So, um, so information, um, things like brain fog, fatigue, these are not things to be ignored. These are not things that, oh, you know, some people have lived with this way for like their entire lives. It's just like, oh, I'm used to it now, you know. You, yeah, you like, do. oh, they, they equate it to age. Like, right. oh, I'm just, right. I'm, I'm over 40, so I'm supposed to be foggy and not know anything that just happened yesterday or where I put my keys or, yeah. yeah absolutely. Not. This is no so brain fog. Yeah, brain fog. Um, like body aches and pains. Um, I think something else that like, and any kind of skin, anything popping up in your skin, just you know, lacerations crashes. and ulcers on yeah. the skin. Yes, it's like that. Yeah. Anything to do with your skin. The skin is large organ in your body, and so uh, that's your first line of defense. And so a lot of the time, paying attention to what's going on, your you know your body demonstrating through your skin you know your skin is not supposed to be dull and lightless and dry it's not supposed to be that way so these are other you know signals of okay something going on I so even it. acne yeah acne yeah i mean outside of hormonal you know, being a hormonal teenager um and even with that you know a lot of the time is also going back to diet to how teenagers eat which is always the best yeah, so um, you know, diet on pizza and burgers is is definitely acne friendly. So um, so yeah, those are the, if I was gonna say headaches, yeah, those are definitely things that you can just brush off and just pop a pill. For the most part, anything you can just kind of take an over the counter solution for, those are things you need to pay attention to, not just you know you know what I thought was the funniest thing. So with milk of magnesia and, and uh, like that, well, that in particular, milk of magnesia, they say, if you take, take this amount and it'll cure you. Right. But if you take too much, it'll give you either diarrhea or constipation. But then the cure that we have for headaches, constipation and diarrhea is really water. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so a, a, a lot of the things that we're doing like you can't even your medication can't even work without water even if, if you're taking medication um I read some books by this man named Walker I cannot remember his full name I know it was Walker and I just saw it the other day and he he talked a lot about juicing is that something also that you work with clients with or yeah I do um a lot of the time, my clients who have uh, cancer, we the idea of of, of um, where it comes to nutrition and cancer is to literally flood the body with as many nutrients as possible, and so juicing is a really good way to get in um, quantities of nutrients that you wouldn't necessarily be able to get in just by eating, you know, just mastic masticating and just eating normally. Like, you're not going to sit there and eat, you know, five cucumbers. It's just not going to happen. Right. So juicing allows, takes the mastication or the breaking down of, you know, the food part. It takes that out and extracts, which is in essence what our body does, right? So we're just one big juicer. So you eat the cucumber, your body separates the, what the nutrients that it needs and sends it to where it needs to go. So with juicing, you remove that part. Now, you know, there is the the part where removing that is fiber, right? So, but, you know, you're usually doing this. It's not, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that this is a way of life, that you are just juicing your entire life, unless you, yeah, no, people aren't ready for that. Not the way that it needs to be done. If you're going to do that, you have to have knowledge and understanding to do, to live that way. But um, being able to get, you know, first thing in the morning, being able to get those nutrients in your body, um, but still allow your digestive system to rest and not have to break the food down is so beneficial for the body. So, so, so beneficial for the body. 
and um it also allows you to mask certain things like turmeric turmeric has a very astringent um almost weird medicinal type of if you take too much but if you juice it and it's being masked by your apples and your cucumber and now you're getting the benefit of that in larger quantities but without the taste piece and your body's still able to get the nutrients and the value of taking that in so yeah juicing is fantastic it's absolutely amazing um and i, I we'll remember how i like, oh if you're sorry producer, we'll say going to juice do not want to overtax your liver by um taking in fruits and vegetables that are loaded with pesticides and um herbicides and all that so as much as possible you want to either buy from your local farmers market and that local farmers just a local farmers market because a local farmers market can pulling items in from different places even though they're local you want to talk to your farmer if you're in that position where you have the local farmers and find out do they have organic practices um because a lot of the time they do, they're growing their fruits and vegetables organically. But it costs a lot of money to get. And you have to jump through so many hoops to get that USDA stamp of approval as organic. And it costs a whole lot of money. A whole lot of money. So some farmers aren't in a position, local farmers aren't in a position to do that. But you still get the benefits of purchasing from the local farmer and maybe growing or she may be growing organic food. Um, the fraction of the cost it would cost you in the store. However, if you're not able to do that, then buy more gas fruits and vegetables from the store is going to be better for you. And you want to look for the stickers. You want to check those stickers and make sure that that number begins with a nine. If it begins with a nine, those items are organic. If it begins with a four, we're talking conventional, pesticide, pesticide Latin. If it begins with an eight, are genetically modified foods so Ooh. yeah you definitely want to step away from anything that's going to eat because you really don't want to be eating genetically modified foods um and as much as possible nines yeah as much as possible nine four is conventional and eight is definitely gmo and i'm repeating this just in case the 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 sound is a little bit off that is great because I was going to definitely ask you about the organic and the GMO versus and then the the labels because now we got this new um we got this yeah. new avocado called appeal yeah and um mm -mm -mm. yeah you know it seems like they're you you try to fix one thing and you cause another and I think that's I think that's really how our food system, I, I don't really think it was like this monstrous beginning of we're going to destroy everyone. I really just think it's like all these little tinkering and solutions. And you wonder who's the guy in the lab that does all this stuff that doesn't think about the outcome, but right. these right. little tinkerings. So how how I began, I remember I read a book one time called Eat Right for Your Blood Type. Had you read yeah. that? One? Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that book? Um, I think that there is, I don't know. I haven't really done a deep dive into that. Um, I'm a positive. So it's funny because mm -hmm. I'm sort of eating the way that I'm supposed to eat for my blood type apart from my blood type. So here's the challenge again. All right. So you asked me, what do I think about this? So eating for my blood type would say that I need to be more plant-based, which I am, and that I can do dairy and that I can um, do seafood. My body does, I can't do dairy, right? So there is not a one size fits all, which is why it's so important for people to connect with their bodies and um, pay attention to the language that their bodies are speaking. So some people can do muscle testing too to ask yourself, ask your body if you can learn how to do muscle testing or if you you can have your um, maybe someone who's good at it that to yeah. do muscle testing because yeah. 
I found out that's how I found out I had E. coli in my stomach. Um, I went to someone holistic because I thought something is growing in my stomach. And she started adding cayenne and tomato juice to my diet to cleanse my colon out and stuff. Yeah. And yeah. Do you have some things where you do this with your clients where you're doing a colon cleanse, like just a, a flushes or cleanses yeah. as well? Co or? Coffee enemas are really good. Coffee enemas are really good to flush the colon. Um and it really helps with stimulating and detoxing the liver because a lot of the time mm. our livers get um, overtaxed and overburdened and that's the that's the organ that gets the toxins out so just imagine if if that organ is is only working at half speed then that means that you know you're not getting the toxins out like you need to so doing a coffee enema really helps with you know allowing the stimulating liver to do its job properly so yeah it just depends on the client though again there's no one that fits all i definitely deal with my clients each and they come because someone can be dealing with something that is physical and you find out it, i had a client for example she um she passed away um in november i worked when she had breast cancer and I worked with her and the cancer went away. Um, but this is that this is that communication piece, right? You if you don't get to the root of what the issue is. So what happened was breast cancer went away, but cervical cancer popped up. And I said to her, I said, listen, we, we talk about all the time getting to the root of why these things are happening. Do we, do you know why this is happening? She said, yeah, she did. She knew it was an emotional, there was something to do from her childhood and it was an emotional thing to do with her father and feelings of abandonment and what have you. Um, um, so yeah, um, needless to say, she, she transitioned from um, cervical cancer. That was really sad for me, that one was, because I don't, to my core, I don't believe that people have to transition from cancer. I don't, I don't think it's necessary. And so it just feels like a waste. It feels like, gosh, that was so avoidable. So, um, so yeah, we can be dealing with things and think it's something that we're eating or, and sometimes it's not something you're eating. It's sometimes it has to do with how you're feeling and your thoughts and, you know, how do you speak to yourself? What are your thoughts about yourself? What are your thoughts about your life? Um, you know, if you're feeling hopeless and helpless, those emotions, emotions are energy in motion. And sometimes those emotions can get stuck in our bodies and they manifest into disease. And if we're only dealing with the manifestation and only looking at the disease and not realizing, no, the root of that is emotion. You can get rid of the symptom or what's showing up but if you haven't taken care of why it showed up to begin with, you better believe it's coming back. Thus, you can have people who are like, oh, this is my ninth time having cancer. Like, whoa. Yeah. And it becomes this normal lifestyle. Well, this is just my lifestyle. Like, no, no, it doesn't have to be. It shouldn't be that. That's not how this works. I, I feel the same about high blood pressure. Like they diagnose a family member of mine with high blood pressure. And I'm like, well, how come you, you diagnose her with that, but you didn't address the fact that she has anxiety and depression, which anxiety and depression is probably what the manifestation of that is the blood pressure. So then, then beyond that, you'd have to go get her psychological help. So help her, her pass and her issues. And now, and so I just think it's amazing because now as an adult, I can look back and look at my mom and be like, hmm, have you been taking painkillers all your life? Because remember back in the day, you could have one thing and then they give you the painkillers and you say, it still hurts. And they give you more. It still hurts. They give you more. Mm -hmm. Oh, now you have. Um, and then manifesting your own accidents, too, where you actually need more medication, because I've seen that. And I think that's the thing with even with Holly Berry, they say she breaks her arm a lot. Like she she falls and has all these accidents on set because she's addicted to these painkillers. But it's like a way of, oh, 
if I don't, I need to have a reason to have these pain medications so that I, it's, it's it, these things that we do, like where we just have to pay attention. Why am I always dropping things? Why am I always right. losing things? Why so is this shoulder is hurting? Good. Because I'm always shouldering other people's burdens. And that's a lot right. of what you're talking about. Um, one thing that brought me even to think about juicing was it was, I used to be a, a medical lab technician and I worked for a company that sent me to Sam's Club. This time it was Sam's Club. The so Sam's Club, I would be that person that sit there and take people's blood and, okay. and test their cholesterol and all this stuff. And then they would try to make us tell people to buy fish oil and stuff like that. And I was just like, in my soul, like, this is stupid because I know this ain't going to work. you know. <laughs> and then I started studying up on things like... um cinnamon and ginger and why we used to use so many spices in our food that those spices they would give you a ginger snap at the pharmacy you'd sit at the pharmacy back in the day and they would give you a ginger snap and that was medication for it to settle your stomach like like our food used to be like you say that's what you're all about your food was like medicine yeah. and this was the man I read about his name was Norman Walker and one of the things that he said was that, and, and you are saying this, so I just love it because it's in total alignment with what I know, is that if your stomach is all backed up, if the highway in your stomach is backed up, it doesn't matter what pills you take. It don't matter what you drink or eat. If it's all backed up and clogged up in there, it's not going to reach. And he was just saying how you only absorb a certain amount of food or digest a certain amount of things yep. in your stomach. Mm -hmm. And so... If it's all full, then they, you can't digest. It just kind of just turns into waste, right? So I don't know what, what you've found or what you how you teach this to people. Um, I use a metaphor to tell my clients: if you the tree in your front garden, the back garden, the tree, the leaves on the tree of browning. Would you buy green paint and paint the leaves green again and say, okay, great, I think it's good. You wouldn't do that, right? You would realize, okay, the tree's sick, something's wrong. I've got to figure out what's wrong. And you go to the root, right? Any arborist will tell you that. You go to the root, and the tree's sick, you go to the root. And it's the same with the human body. Again, it's basic, right? So something in the space is out of alignment, something's off line, they get to the root of what the problem is. And the root for different people are different things. So again, not one size fits all, but it's important to be in um, self-awareness. So a lot of us are just kind of churning through life, just mindlessly moving and doing things day in, day out, just kind of on this rote um Pat, we're kind of in this rote pattern and it's really important to stop and pay attention to the things that you're doing the things that you're thinking um because the body gets locked into patterns and um it will pull you towards those patterns to the point where you're just doing these things automatically and not really right. It rather, it, I mean, it can't make you eat right. All it can do is compensate. Well, since you're not doing it like this, I'm going right. to twist your spine like this and I'm going to make you walk like this. And this is how we're going to adjust to the way right. that you're effing up. Since you're right. messing up, I'm going to... Let's, I'm going to do what I can do. Oh, and right. So you're get, you get used to walking with a limp and your shoulder up like this right. because your body is like, I can't do anything else, but I can move this around on the inside, but I can't make you put in here what I need. I think it too, don't certain, um, if you don't eat certain foods, like your body starts dissolving its own organs or something. Like if you don't have, oh, there it is. The proper amount of like fat or oils going to your joints Mm -hmm. Or if you're not taking it in from certain, I don't know, certain parts of your body needs these these oils. Yeah, it's and like your protein. Yeah, like your proteins as well. If you're not getting in the right amount of proteins and enough, that your body will it will start to consume itself. It right. Or if your energy, you know, if you're not if you're not so, for example, if you're fasting, so that's and that's the beauty of fasting. Fasting is oh my gosh, you want to talk about fountain of youth? Fasting is the fountain of youth. Okay. Um, 
what it does, you know, after a period of time, it taps into. So initially, when you first start um, fasting, it just taps into the surface glucose stores. So it will take up, you know, all the sugars and the glucose, which is what, you know, it's used for energy. Once it depletes that, so you go from 24 hours into, I think by like, by 72 hours, now it's going, your body's going into something called um, autophagy, which is basically the body eating itself. But it's not eating itself like zombie eating itself. <laughs> it's tapping into waste products um, in the body. And it will get rid of cells, which is excellent for cancer patients. It will it will start to eat up those cells that are um, cancerous or that are um, mutating. And it will just eat all of that stuff. It will literally just go in and eat and eat and eat and eat. So it starts so, from the bottom, basically, and works its way up. Yeah, so it's, it's exactly. on the lower rungs. It's like we're gonna get rid right. of you guys first because you, you're, right. you're because new, again, you're remember, employees. <laughs> because remember, the body is always working to keep you in balance and homeostasis. So it's not going to do massively, th you know, things that are just going to completely throw you off balance. It's going to do things in an intelligent, logical way. So it will start with the glucose. And then it will go to your fat stores and it will, you know, eat up your extra fat stores, right? That you don't really need. And then it will go into, okay, all the fat stores are gone. So now we're going into, um, now we're going into the, the waste products in the body and it will eat that for energy to give you energy. So, um, so yeah, that it just, it just literally gives you an entire reset. Like if you think of like your phone, when you've got a virus or some type of weirdness going on your phone, the quickest way to reset all of that is to go into factory resetting and it takes the phone right back to factory resetting, right? And you don't have those issues anymore. Fasting does the same thing for the human body. Now I have to, because I live in America, or should I say I live on planet earth. And because people don't take radical responsibility for their actions and they blame everybody and sue everybody, I have to say that if you are diabetic or if you have any other issues that uh, fasting is something that you should do with uh, the guidance of someone who knows, you know, to make sure that you don't crash and burn, basically. Um, <laughs> in a nutshell. I, I was thinking <laughs> about this because, um, too, I've... I've taken some other classes and the issue they said is that before you break yourself down you should build yourself up first so how would you suggest that people build themselves up first like it you know it says you're going to add some supplements to your diet before you go to any kind of fasting because you don't you don't want to be low on vitamin D and vitamin A and vitamin E, and then you go to a fast that'll complete and then start breaking yourself down when you're already in a state of depletion because you're not healthy in the first place. We lost your sound. Maybe there's a button that got pushed. Was it near the phone? Because Okay, so building yourself back up. Yeah, so you want to make sure when you're juicing, like, so a lot of people will be like, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to go have my big steak meal and, you know, my Big Mac meal and I'm going to just binge eat because I'm fasting tomorrow. That is not how you do that. That is, that is the worst way to begin a fast. You want to, you want to be kind to your body and take it through a gradual process so that you're, it's almost like you're weaning off food and you're not coming off cold turkey. So it could be that you back off the meat and you back off the dairy if dairy is part of your diet and you go more plant-based. And then, you know, you may the next day be like, okay, because you kind of want to give yourself a week. You kind of want to give your body a week to sort of go into that. So then the next day you may say, okay, um, I've been doing plant-based cooked foods. Now I'm going to go plant-based raw. Um, and then, you know, you may say, okay, now I'm going to go to juices and water. And there are different ways to fast. You know, there's dry fasting, there's juice and water fasting, 
There are fruit fasts. There are vegetable fasts. Um, so there are different ways to fast, especially for people who have like diabetes and so on and so forth. If they're taking if people who are taking medication. Um, so it's not, again, it's not a one size fits all. It's really tapping into your body and listening to your body and understanding what works for your body. So that's what I help my clients to do. I help them to be able to tap into um, what works for them, right? Because what worked for your aunt may not work for you. What worked for your sister may not work for you. So um, it's just that guidance of, of making sure that you don't set yourself up for failure, really. And truly. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I have, you know, I have programs that, you know, I help people with fasting if they want to do a fast, if they want to do. Intermittent. Is that one of your also? I, I, I intermittent fast every single day of my life. So. Oh, um, wow. I do. So um, I'm and over she's my real time. cute, y'all. She really is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank she, you. She's shapely. <laughs> so I, um, I don't eat anything before noon. So this is something that I teach. Our bodies go through three cycles every day. Um, there is the um, elimination phase, which is the very first cycle that your body goes through in the day. Then there is the, um, the alimentation phase. And then there is the, um, oh my goodness, my brain. Mm. Elimination, al uh, alimentation and oh my gosh give me a second my brain is a little slow today and it's because I haven't eaten yet so I'm actually past my time for eating and my brain does not work well when I, haven't, when I have not eaten well okay when I've not taken care of my body so um let's see hold on it's elimination Eli ah, there we go now I remembered it okay so it's it's elimination alimentation and assimilation so Eliminate, el elimination sounds exactly like what it is. It's your body eliminating toxins, waste, and getting out, getting that out of the body, which is very important. Then the third, the second phase it goes through is the um, alimentation phase. The alimentation phase is when you are giving the body what it needs, like the building blocks that it needs through foods. So during that phase, you want to make sure that you are giving your body like prime foods um, not just anything and not just oh I need to eat so let me just grab something so you want to be very intentional about what you're eating during that phase and then the last phase is the assimilation phase and that that's the phase where your body now takes those nutrients from the very good foods that you've given it and the, all the nutrients it, it extracts all those nutrients and it takes them to where they need to go so the elimination phase is a morning phase the assimilation phase, um, no, the alimentation phase is like from noon to seven in the evening. So that's when I do my eating. So in the morning, my elimination phase, I'm focused on drinking. Well, I'm still drinking. I'm drinking water, um, herbal teas. That's a really good time to do juicing. I'm doing um, fruits that are subacidic or acidic so that's like my citruses that's my berries um and, and any kind of like alkaline food fruits i'm doing those during that time and then at during my um assimilation phase i'm sorry during the alimentation phase which is that middle block um, that's where i'm being really intentional about the foods that i'm putting in for lunch for dinner because that's usually like the lunch and dinner phase and then i have a cutoff time like where you're you stop eating like you can still drink but you want to stop eating because you want to give your digestive system the opportunity to rest and for the other systems to kick in to do what they need to do and so you can drink more than water you can drink <laughs> yeah like i drink i drink herbal teas i drink a lot of herbal teas like uh right now but i mean you're and saying make... after the seven o'clock like would you ever have like one of the juices during that time oh yeah Okay, just checking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a hard time. I have built some hardcore bad habits in the last year, I think, or so with, I would say not even one year, probably two years, where now it's like, I actually have potato chip. Like there was just things I didn't use to buy, but now it's like I'm buying it. And then I'm like one o'clock in the morning, 
I think whenever you're taking classes or doing stuff, you want, you just kind of want to be snacking and there's some bad habits. So let me ask you something, right? Because this is something that I go through with my clients. Why are you up at one o'clock? Now, there are some people who are nocturnal, like it's in their design that they're nocturnal and they function better and work better um, in the night. But typically most people, like that's when your body's healing. So why are you up at one o'clock? I think it's because I'm supposed to be in Egypt and my whole body is seven hours off. Okay. You know what? And this isn't because I went on this trip. What I noticed when I went on this last trip was I get up at six o'clock with no problem and I go to bed on a, a reasonable time. I said, maybe I should have been living here this whole time. Because I mean, for that, some reason, again, my body what... here, I'm just like, oh my God, like. I don't know. And then too, I wasn't here with all my things. I think I'm extremely overstimulated with, I got my laptop, my TV, my phone, yeah. all my crafting supplies. I got cats and raccoons and yep. peacocks. And I'm like really excited all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I you, think, you, you say I need, that. I need some you, rest. I do right. really. I have to close my curtains so that I cannot even see the animals too. Cause I'm like, always looking at the animals and I'm peeping outside and I'm like, I'm really kind of excited. Yeah. I love <laughs> it. You know what though? We like the way that we live now is so out of sync with the planet. Right. So yeah. there are certain things that we take for granted. Like when it gets dark, that there are certain chemicals that are released in our body, in our circadian clock and our circadian rhythm, certain chemicals are released because it's time to go to sleep. Um, and then like in the daytime, like, you know, the light starts to come in through the window and you just wake up naturally. These being woken up by alarm clocks and being, you know, pulled out of our sleep. It's not healthy and it's not good for us. Um, but with all of the technology, the technological advances, the technological advances that we've made, they're good and they're not, you know, it's, there's pros and cons to it. Yes, it now means that I can stay up till one o'clock in the, in the night because I've got lights and I've got TV. And But what we don't realize is that these lights that are emitting uh, blue lights are actually affecting our circadian rhythm. It's affecting our ability to sleep and it's throwing our systems completely off. And thus we see more cases of cancer. Like in all of the advancements that we have, and all of this growth that we're experiencing, we can't seem to get the health piece together. Like health wow. is not getting better. It's getting worse. It is getting worse. You know, whether it be people are stressed out or they're not resting enough or they're not eating properly or emotionally they're out of whack. Like, you know, we're growing, but, but, but we're shrinking at the same time. So I completely get where you're saying that, you know, there's all the stimuli that's that it's like it's like FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. That if I shut down, usually I have out. a problem. Yeah. Usually I have a problem with that because I, I'll say that I'm more I'm excited about life, and now that I'm like um, an at home mom doing more of the things that I like, everything that I like is inside my house. So it's like. Like, woo! but then yeah. also too, it makes me exhausted because I'm like, I'm always looking around, seeing something else that needs to be done where now maybe I did put my work aside, but it's like, huh, maybe you should sweep the floor yeah, uh, yeah. and then you end up mopping. Yeah. And I can't find this particular bracelet while I was cleaning up my jewelry. I couldn't find this bracelet. And I tell you, I was flipping over the couch one day at two, three o'clock in the morning, looking for something that I know, you know, you could do this tomorrow but something is urged inside me it's like uh, but so it's uh, definitely some unrest inside me where you know I know at one point I had unreasonable fears like I used to have a fear of people driving me and then I would have a fear like a plastic bag coming down the road I would so I've I know I've dealt with like anxiety on different levels mm -hmm. but um I really think it it probably would do me better just to do a lot more um meditation than before where yeah. I know at one point too I was you know even before my trip I think too I was doing a, some um self reassuring I am safe yeah like calm myself down like mm -hmm. it's okay to be 
you know, whatever. Or yeah, I learned that by watching a friend of mine. I'm like, wow, he does this. He says he does it uh, the way it sounds. It sounds like he does this for at least an hour in a day where he's been doing this thing where he's reassuring himself and and do and helping the chemicals in his liver, like you're saying, yeah. by by doing these type of exercises. I was just listening to a recording of him and I'm like, oh, I need to go back to that recording and do some of these exercises where I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all of it, right? That's that self-care piece. That's yeah. that, you know, making, taking care of, of, of our vessel, our body, um, a priority. Um, but they're not is, feeling like you have no- like a guilty. Right? There's guilty, but then there's another thing going on because I think because people, People are like, we're ascending now. And it all oh, it, it's this thing where they're, they're it's like the chevrons are clothing. It's everything's happening now. And everybody feels like they have to do everything right now. Exactly. Like if you haven't learned uh, learned how to do a certain skill, you gotta do it now. Or like like yeah, it, it's it is it's a part of the self-care piece because it's it is promoting guilt and you're feeling stressed out and alarmed. And it's like, no, you have all the time that you, you have need. all the time that you need. Like really, like. I think maybe I'm, I'm missing that because I, I was doing that before with myself. Like, no, you have all the time you need. And then it's yeah. like, but please go ahead because you're, you're really going to talk about that. Yeah. Because, you know, I think if we can, as, as you know, in humanity, get to this space of everything is always working out for me. Everything is always working out for me. Like, you know, being in flow and getting out of this this rat race of the, the anxiety of I'm missing out on something or I need to, like, no, I don't. Whatever I need comes to me when it's supposed to. Like, everything is in alignment. I'm in alignment. So whatever I need comes. Whoever I'm supposed to speak to comes. Like, all of those things, like, you know, it, 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 it it's it's like we've transcended the rat race and in our in our quest to be spiritual and connect you know and disconnect from what we know is not good for us we've now transcended those habits into oh my gosh it's mercury retrograde and so it becomes this anxiety around mercury retrograde retrograde instead of seeing the beauty of mercury retrograde which is to look within and to you know, when things don't go the way that we want them to, see the flow in that. See that it's okay to just kind of sit back and just observe and be like, okay, what what am I supposed to be learning from this now? What is this trying to teach me? What lesson am I supposed to be learning from that? So, um, so yeah, being uh, just it's that being in alignment and trusting that you are where you're supposed to be and whatever is happening is happening because it's supposed to be happening and being okay with that. I'm honestly just thought about this, like maybe this is what's happening with food is people are like, I want this ice cream now and I want this thing now. And, it, and it's like, this is also pushing you to overeat is because some type of anxiety towards wanting these things but feeling like you're running out of time or you're not going to get what you want or like uh, I did have another family member who grew up in a situation where she felt starved she felt well there was a situation where maybe she didn't always have enough food so yep. now maybe she overeats because of that mm -hmm. yep that, those are real things all of those Compete, are real things. competing for food especially uh, yeah boys and the competing competing with brothers or just literally not having enough food in the refrigerator yeah or it becomes this thing of like you know because I lived in lack I will never live that way again so when I get to an age where I can have control over those things I'm not there's no off switch it's I'm if I want it I'm gonna have it and I'm gonna have it now and it doesn't matter what it is because it because not to have it is a trigger and it reminds me of how things used to be. And I don't ever want to be there again. So, again, that's that mental piece, right? That's that whole, again, understanding that all of these pieces touch and all of these things influence our decisions, our choices. And then the industry knowing these things does things like there's something called a holy trinity in in. Um, well, it's actually the unholy trinity in food. When you pair sugar, fat, and salt together, it behaves like crack 
in our brains it behaves and it makes it literally turns things on and starts firing in a way where like it makes you want to eat more and more and more sugar fat and what is it sugar fat and salt so think about oh yeah that no. think about think about a food big mac sugar. meal come on just the fries alone right and so you have people like i've experienced eating mcdonald's and afterwards still feeling like i'm not like i i like i'm missing something like i need more food i want to eat something else um so yeah so and this is why the intentionality of really being an awareness of you of 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 you as a person that's where that bio individuality and that biodiversity comes in because you are not just you know you're not just what you eat and what you watch and you're a culmination of your entire life you're a culmination of your entire experiences and if you believe in previous lifetimes you're a culmination of those too so you know it all it all works together it all works together since you said this because somebody might not understand like how much sugar is in an actual Big Mac <laughs> or, or a Coke. spaghetti sauce or, or a Coke. Well, there's these hidden sugars that people yeah. don't know. And then if you really look, it's like, holy crap. It yeah. really, it wasn't even in the drink because people think they're getting away with it because you got a diet Coke. I mean, and you can speak on that if you want, but there's some <laughs> hidden sugars too. Yeah. And even fake sugars still can act like sugar in your yeah. body. So don't think that you're hiding, but they just right. in some formaldehyde type um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, reaction in your body. So, but where are so some the thing is, is, is to make sure that people understand that sugar is not bad because the body needs sugar. It needs it because it turns it into glucose in order for you to it uses it for energy. But it's the form and what we do to it. And when we separate it from foods, even oils, right? So. Oils are needed. There are some vitamins that our body takes in that are fat soluble. So that means that those vitamins cannot be assimilated into the body unless fat is present. However, when we separate fat from its natural, from how it shows up naturally in society, it means we're going to take in more than we need. So for example, um, avocado oil, is one of the better oils if you're going to be, you know, using oil. But eating the avocado is so much better than the avocado oil, right? So it's the same thing with sugar. Um, you know, sugars show up in fruits, sugars show up in vegetables, sugars show up in starches. The problem becomes when we separate those sugars and then we're bleaching and they're chemically, you know, they're, they're, they're being infused with chemicals and now they're becoming chemically laden. And then we're now adding those to foods in gigantuan proportions and then we're consuming them. That's it where just the blown my mind because I think that's the meaning of like the store's name is Whole Foods. Yes. This is what it actually yes. means. Yes. This is oh, exactly I, what it means. Oh my gosh. Yep. Whole wow. Foods. Wow. So, but even in that, you know, you can go to Whole Foods and you can buy packages. Yeah, they're nothing <laughs> good about, I mean, it's not really that great anymore, right. but. <laughs> right. right. I remember going in there one day and I was so aggravated, right? Because, because of my mind and how I believe, I believe that when you have knowledge and understanding about certain things, you have a responsibility to the community at large, to humanity. And so Whole Foods, understanding, at least that was the idea, I thought that they understood food. And so I remember going in looking for a watermelon with seeds because you do not want to eat watermelon without seeds, okay? Um, and they had the nerve to have organic, seedless. organic, seedless watermelon. When I tell you I was hot that day, <laughs> because for me, you have an obligation. You have a responsibility to, to people, the people that you serve. And that's an oxymoron. That's a complete oxymoron to change something in nature the way it occurs naturally and call it organic. The name organic, what organic even means, that is such a, 
it's, it's, that's in complete opposition to what organic means. So anyway, I digress. All of these things are just have just become marketing terms. And that's funny because the marketing is so good. People are going in there with their yoga pants on and they just, um, they think they're doing good, but I don't know. Sometimes I don't, I don't know. Yeah. They, they, they I mean, still think that they're doing good because if you, you really have to be an educated consumer. Yes, you do. You re we really yeah. do. The education piece is missing. Um, and that's, you know, for me, that's where I want to educate people before they get sick. Um, is, you know, the, the, the you literally have the power. And the, the power comes in through education and the decisions that you make about what you're consuming. And cons consumption isn't just about food and eating. It's what are you consuming, you know, through your eyes, through your ears, you know, what are you taking in? Because those things ultimately shape you and form your beliefs around different things. And then they influence your decisions ultimately. I'm I'm wondering what what is your limitation on helping people that are not local? Like, uh, oh, I do, I you, I have I have I have clients out of the country. So. Okay, so yeah. if anything, you give them the plans. You can oh, coach, yeah. counsel them. You you pinpoint where the problems are and you I help do. solve problems. Yeah, so, so there there are a few ways I work with my clients. Um, I work with uh, clients one on one, um, where we work with each other for a period of time to help them through whatever it is that they're, that they're dealing with and that they're wanting to reverse. Um, I have something called my green print, which is, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's not so high touch because where with my one-on-one -on -one, you're working with me and I'm really helping you to break things down. And I have a gift of being able to see into people. Um, and being able to pull out things that they didn't necessarily know were there that links to why they're dealing with intuitive some um yeah. so it's more like yeah intuitive so motion. yeah right so I'm definitely like very em em empathetic so in 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 human design for anybody who knows that I'm a mental projector and I only have my head and my ajna defined so all my other centers are wide open which allows me to taste and feel other people and literally tap into the different areas within them so i'm i'm almost like an open book almost um so um i definitely have gifting in that area to be able to pull and see deeper and then i have some other channels that um i have a healing channel that allows me to help to just sometimes just by sitting and talking with me people have experienced healing so yeah so i have those <laughs> i have those proponents so um what was I saying? Because I feel like I just went on a tangent there. No, tangent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, How I, do you help so, people so that, yeah, that so, are so, away? So, yeah. Right. So the one-on-one, -on -one, that's more of a high touch. That's, that's where you really get to do all of the things, right? And, and, and tap into all of the things. Then for people who can't, who don't necessarily want to do that or, um, you know, they're on a different type of journey. I have my green print, which is basically I coach them for about 90 minutes and I'm able to pull some things out. And then I create a guide for them. That's a PDF guide. And it touches all areas of their life. They're spiritual, they're emotional. And it gives them guidance about food, about, you know, lifestyle, um, just different things, whatever it is that they need. So that, you know, they have that. And that's something that they can refer back to over and over again. I even include recipes, specific recipes that would be good for them, specifically based on what they are dealing with. Um, uh, I have my book, which is called Kicking Cancer's Ass 30 Days and Beyond. And um, that just kind of gives people a really good view of those three phases that I spoke about and what are the practices that they can implement in their daily life to be able to start seeing changes um, and then I also have for my clients who um, my diet my, my clients who have kidney disease or kidney failure um, they the, the, these particular clients I have they work with some doctors in India and then I handle the the food aspect for them so I teach them based on um, Ayurvedic medicine, how to make, because they, they're giving a very limited 
<laughs> food list. And so I help them to create recipes that they'll be able to um, eat, you know, because a lot of the times when they see that list, they're like, what am I supposed to do with this? So I actually curate recipes for them based on the, the food um, list that they're allowed to eat. And I work with them for four weeks and we do like a cooking class via Zoom. So a lot of my clients I work with via Zoom, um, the ones who are local, I do meal prepping for um, because I'm not sending food across wherever because it just, to me, it, it loses its its vitality when you do that. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. so it's so much easy, it's so much better for me to just go and jump on a Zoom and teach them how to prepare these foods. Um, so yeah, those are typically the ways that I, I work with my clients. I am currently going through a shifting um, of just kind of looking at, you know, am I fulfilling my mission here in the best way that I'm supposed to? Like I'm, some of these things, my, you know, my offering suites, is this in alignment with who I'm supposed to be helping and how I'm supposed to be helping them? So I'm, I'm actually currently in the process of sort of um, uh, being in meditative practices and aligning with making sure that I'm showing up the way that I'm supposed to show up. So, yeah. This one might be odd, but um, is there, I'm not sure if you've ever had to deal with anybody who's dealing with like, um, I guess maybe so. You deal with people who probably do use medical marijuana or maybe they have something going on with alcohol mm -hmm. or any other kind of drugs that, but they're so still- so usually how that shows up, it doesn't show up as, you know, someone coming to me with that. It, it shows up as somebody may have psoriasis of the liver. Uh -huh. um, right. And so they're dealing with a health issue um, based on, you know, and even that, that's not the root, right? So, you know, someone with an alcoholic problem. That's not the root. That's just the medium that's being used that's now manifesting into disease. But that's not the issue. That's not why. Why are they drinking alcohol, right? So, um, so yeah, no, typically people who come to me are dealing with some form of health issue or they are afraid of um, having some form of health issue because they've been told this runs in your family or that runs in your family. And so they're coming to me to ask me, you know, what are some things that they, you know, what to coach them on how to eat properly, how to eat properly, how to live properly. And then I also work with people who um, have had different diseases and they don't want a reoccurrence. You know, they want it to, you know, they want to be in a place where they're truly healed. So, yeah. So, yeah. So not, not really that anyone comes to me with addictions, but they're coming to me that because of the, the, the outcome of that addiction that's now created disease in their body. That makes absolute sense. Yeah. So I know um, people say the videos are long and I'm just listening to you. I could just <laughs> ask you everything about your life. Like it just, it's wonderful talking to you and that's, well, maybe we can do a part two. Maybe I'll come Yeah, back. definitely in resonance. But that's yeah. why I had to get that out there. Who do you help? How do you help? And how can people find you? Yeah, so um, that's so funny because I'm so challenged with the who do I help? Because in, in, in the industry, it's like, you know, you have to have this ideal client. And like, for me, it's just like, no. I think you somewhat <laughs> summarized it. Yeah. You, you know, did. You did. I, did. Yeah, I, I, I help whoever... I'm supposed to help. Like, I really believe that I have soul contracts with people who um, needed, who needed my help. And when it's time for us to meet, we meet and people send, you know, these people to me. Um, my job is just to make sure that I'm out there and that people know that I'm there. Right. So um, I believe that I help whoever needs my help, that I'm here to help whoever it is that I'm supposed to help. Um, how can you find me? You can find me on Instagram. I am Nikki Inman um, on Instagram. Um, that you might, I don't know if you, yeah, maybe in the, in the, um, oh, yeah, I'm going to put description. Yeah, you could like, like your website. And yeah, 
I just yeah. like when people say it out, out loud because you yeah. know you're not going to catch it fast enough. And now you can't, you're, you're going to have to go in the description link to find there it out. Right. That, so right. I, right. So I am Nikki Inman and that is on Instagram. Um, you can email me at Nikki at Nikki Um, And then how else can you reach me? I used to give out my phone number. I had to stop doing that. <laughs> I had to stop doing that. That got that got a little bit crazy. You but, will have um, people from Fiji listen. sending you messages, and it won't be anything to do with business. But um, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, I just get these like, "What should I do? How? What can I take for this? And what can I take for that?" I'm like, listen, I need you to book a call. That's what I need you to do. <laughs> so um, yeah. So Instagram, um, email. Uh, you can reach me on Facebook too. Um, just Nikki, Nikki Inman. Um, yeah, those are, but the it's the best ways to reach me is 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 via email and Instagram. I'm still working on a website, but I do have you know like web links. Mm -hmm. uh, I just need to Linktree. Yeah. Linktree is awesome. Well, I you use put all your things on Linktree. Yeah, <laughs> so I have a form of Linktree. It's called Direct Me. So oh, I okay. use that, yeah. So, um, but I would like to, you know, encourage your your listeners to, um, um, on the link that you're gonna put in, in the description box, I have a five hacks. Um, it's actually like a cheat sheet on how to clean eat, how to clean up um, your eating habits, because you know, every small change. Even the smallest of changes is a relief for your body and walking, you know, at least you're on the journey to walking in the direction of, you know, helping your body to heal. So the uh, five, the, it's like, they're like cheat codes on how to eat, clean eat. Um, and it's, it's, again, you know, it's, it's not necessarily eat this and don't eat this. It's more of a, you know, avoiding these things that create these things in your body you know and just giving like it's it's, it's an education piece um that i think would be very helpful too nice lovely okay well i'm thanking you i'm not gonna keep you all day because i know you you're traveling and um got a busy life and i'm really looking forward to looking over the the cheat that you're you're talking about and yeah, the cheat um, shape I don't yeah. know. It's not me really thinking because I think it really, it really hit me. It's like, ah, oh, what you're doing, you have some panic inside. I have like some panic inside me, maybe. Yeah. And now this is me keeping myself awake and doing some things. So it's like, yes, something that I can work on because we're never all the way there. We're always working on something, right? Always, always, always growing. Always, always. like if we stop growing, we're not living anymore. So there's always something to learn always there's always levels you know to to attain we're always ascending so it's all good it's all yeah good. it's a process yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for having me i've had a brilliant time thank you, know, you i love this i love being able to speak about what i'm so passionate about so thank you so much for the opportunity to share and you know trusting me with your audience i really appreciate oh it. yeah I'm I'm so glad I'm glad we were able to revolve and get back to it, and I'm so yes. glad I saw you and Tammy too. That was so exciting. So yes. <laughs> yeah, now with Tammy and um, her husband, I.